Guys, welcome back to Outer Bounds Learn and welcome back to a brand new video. We're in Greece, we're at Costa Navarina, we're on the bay course today, absolutely amazing. Shout out to Costa Navarina for having us this week. I've got a video today with two special guests, two pros, Liv Cook and Simon Dyson. We're out on the course playing some holes and we're going to pick their brains, so we're going to get their best advice, non-technical, so really important non-technical. So we're looking at how you can improve your scores on the golf course just through maybe thinking a bit smarter uh, and yeah helping you shoot lower scores let's go find them and let's go get some advice right first person in the hot seat hello people call you olivia we're or going live? with live okay we'll go with live <laughs> live cook is first up fresh from dubai fresh. out here greece with me hello, and the hello. rest of the team and uh you're gonna give me a bit of advice i am that's non-technical non-technical that's fine and you've gone for a chip haven't you yeah, so I've gone for club selection. Mm -hmm. So instead of, for a beginner, it's quite difficult to obviously get the ball airborne, right? Yeah. So I'm going to go with a seven iron here. Okay. So we're just, I say we're just off the green. Yeah. We've got quite a bit of short, rough to play with. Mm -hmm. um, I would usually play the shot for myself as well because I just find it so much easier. I would tend to stand a lot closer to the ball, yeah. have the club pretty much vertical mm -hmm. for me, and toe in the ground. Okay. And for me, I'd play this like a putt. Okay. So I wouldn't have any like wrist hinge or anything like that. Okay. Any movement of the hips. I would literally just keep everything stable. Hold that there for me. Before you do that, what would you see most amateurs typically do? Is it more club choice that you would see here? So people just choose the wrong choice? Oh, right. Yeah. So, yeah, as an amateur, I think a lot of people would go, oh, I'll take like a 56 here or a yeah. 60 degree here and then tend to blade it across the green. Yeah. So yeah. And for reference, like this is all flat here. It's a bit grainy, we're on Bermuda grass, but really you don't need loft to be honest here to keep no, things simple. I think what people get that. wrong here, I like that bit of advice, is that people will choose too much loft, not get the strike, yeah. and they duff it a few yards in front of them. But this club eliminates a bit of that, doesn't it? And to be honest with you, you could even take a putter. Yeah, <laughs> so you could. You could do that. But let's go with the seven iron, get that little hop and let it roll most of the way. I like that. A <laughs> little bit short, but I like that. You get that the was point. nice, yeah? <laughs> yeah. We'll go with that. We'll yeah? go with that. So guys, listen to live here. Choose the right club. Don't always go for the lofted option. I like that bit of a right. You don't have to take a seven iron, you can take eight iron, nine iron, anything. Whatever you want to do just to keep it simple, yeah? Yeah. Chip in round the greens. Love it. Right, next guest up. Familiar face, Simon Dyson. How are you, Simon? I'm good, thanks. How good. are you? Really good, thank you. So, piece of advice for people listening at home, non-technical if we can, so no technique, how can they get better at golf without thinking about their swing, just by playing, maybe thinking a bit differently, playing a little bit smarter? That would be it, yeah. playing smarter, yeah. playing actually to how capable you know you are. Mm -hmm. So when I played on tour, I literally looked at every shot. Yeah. If I could hit it seven times out of ten, yeah. I'd take it on. Yeah. If I couldn't, if it was like four or five, unless it was a different under the different circumstances, I would never take it on. So you play a bit more reserved. So I'd play a bit more reserved and yeah. then go, right, so what shot can I hit yeah. seven, eight, nine times out of ten? I really and like take that, that on. because I see a lot of amateurs, especially people that I see, that just try and do far too much. They far try and too hit much. every shot. That's, yeah. They see the shot and they just aim at flags. They try and... Do way too much. The trouble is, a lot of players can hit the shot, yeah. but they can only hit it once or twice yeah, out absolutely. of ten. But they think they can hit it ten out of ten. Yeah. It's actually knowing your capabilities. I really like that. So what have we got here? So your example is going to be on this hole. We're at Costa Navarino. Yeah. We're on at the Bay Course, and we've got a little dog leg here. I'm going to show you on the camera. We're going to pan around. So we've got water bunkers the greens all the way over there loads going on on this hole isn't there so yeah i mean there is a lot going on for somebody who fades the ball and mm -hmm. hits it a long way like yourself you know it'd be very tempting to take on yeah. but greens guarded by bunkers mm -hmm. so if you get up against one of them 40 yard 30 40 yard short of the green yeah. you got a tough shot mm -hmm. so i again i'm just playing to what i know i'm capable of yeah literally there's a massive bunker down the left hand side i'm just going to hit two iron at that carry yeah. it about 250 leave myself about 70 yards yeah. i trust myself again that 
that's a good part of my game. Yeah. So I'm just playing percentage golf. Yeah. Wide fairway with two iron. Give yourself a chance with a wedge. Give myself a chance. That like is that. it, and no silly errors. I like it. Let's see the shot then. Let's see if we can uh, see if we can play so the yeah. shot. I'm sure you've done this many a times in your career. <laughs> so yeah, middle of the bunker. I'm yeah. just going to hit a dead straight shot. Concentrate mm -hmm. on the strike. Water's not even in play here. So cool. Let's see what we can do. That is arrow straight, just at the corner of that, you might just catch it down. Yeah. Yeah, perfect, isn't it? I like that, it's just yeah. caught the left edge of the fairway, but I did pull it a little bit, but mm -hmm. it's still in play. Let's get up there and have a look at the next shot. See yeah? where it is. So, as executed, we got the bunker here, which we didn't go in, we carried the water comfortably, and we're in the middle of the fairway. That was the kind of plan, I had my little bit further right, if mm -hmm. I had been, I'd have been yeah. on the angle probably a little bit closer leaving myself 70 but yeah. because I pulled it left myself 91 mm -hmm. but it's still a good number yeah but the pin is just on top of a ridge yeah so now I'm going to flight it a little bit low and try and take the spin off because okay. if I hit a normal shot yeah land it I'd have to land it past the pin okay so interestingly are you flat I'll just show you the pin quickly so if we zoom in here you can just see that dark patch of uh, green that's the ridge and the pin is sitting just on top. So as Simon said there, if he hits his normal shot, I'm guessing that's going to spin too much. Yeah. And you're going to have to play it past the pin to almost pop it back. But you're now changing the flight to... So they actually get a little skip forward forwards. first as yeah. opposed to soft and then spin. Perfect. But I've still got 91, 92 in my head. And I really like this as well because I just think, again, relating it back to amateur golf because you're a brilliant golfer, but I think amateurs, especially here, you got upslope, would just hit a flat out club in the air. Yeah. No control whatsoever. Yeah. As soon as it's up there, it's gone. And no and control. And they'd probably hit a club that went 91. Yeah. So they have to hit it perfectly. Yeah, to get it there. So actually, they should be thinking 95 here, I yeah. reckon. If they hit it Landing perfect. It 10, with, 12 foot short. With that, is back to the first point. It's one yeah. in 10. Yeah. But usually it's a bit thin, it's a bit heavy. Yeah. Probably not going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So have you clubbed up, interestingly? No, I mean, I hit club? this 110. Okay. Oh, so, perfect. But I'm just going to put it back back of the stance yep. and just drill it in there a little bit. Cool. Maybe even a little hint of draw to okay. take that spin off like it. even more. Let's see it. Literally executed it. Oh, Chance. look at that one. Look at that. I think that's why you played two Masters, isn't it? And one on tour, isn't it, Simon? I didn't hit shots like that at the Masters, that is for sure. <laughs> right, guys, really quick one. We've just found a really interesting lie here. Dramatically integrain this, isn't it, Simon? Just yeah. skid your club that other way and just show them. So that is snagging so get... like hell. So what happens typically here? So basically, you'd see a lot of ams mm -hmm. aim left, yeah. and then the D loft it. Mm -hmm. Cut across it and get that leading edge digging in. Mm -hmm. It's almost a roll reversal of that. What you want to do is aim pretty square, so feet a lot close together, then you can't get any lateral movement. So you're aiming dead square to the target. I've opened the face a little bit to yeah. engage the bounce, so mm -hmm. the leading edge can't dig in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So square, but with with so your body square. for people listening. Now everyone with your... thinks everyone thinks your face is aiming right. It's yeah. not. You've just added loft to it and engaged the bounce. Mm -hmm. And then all I'm going to do is let the club release, and I release it back online, and then the bounce engages. Look at that. That strike is in. Oh, how and good. Like, there's no divot. Was that strike there? There's no divot. I just actually, me and Liv just had this shot and just kind of had made a bit Shit, of a mess of it, it, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Liv, do that then. So we just, we just made a mess. That's our bit of a graveyard there. Okay. The divot. So aim square. So Liv, aim, aim at me. Aim like you're going to chip it to me. Yeah. Right, stand feet closer together. Okay. And a bit closer to the ball. Yeah. Open the face a little bit. Yeah. Right, and now I want you to release it now to me just yep. let the club pass yeah but oh, look at that look at that I've been it. the interesting thing about that I'll is you didn't again. dump the club into the ground which well, is like yeah, what no, typically what happens okay we'll go get the ball should we have another go we'll have another go really interesting that is because i always 
get this shot. Sometimes I play it well, sometimes I don't because of the timing of it, but that, I just had a go. That's so pure. So pure. Stop dead. <laughs> you just did something really interesting with me. So same lie. Same that lie. Snaggy, snaggy, snaggy. And you just said to me, do set up and then just practice with right hand. So I've got a little bit open with the face. And then Simon just said, just do one handed practice. And for me, even if I drive the club down with that right hand, it's not digging in. Using the bounce, not the leading edge, mm. which is what we want. So. Let's do both hands then, so square, aiming a bit right, and I'm just feeling that right hand That's it. is going. How much Lovely. Is that? That's interesting, isn't it? I really like that. Right guys, I'll give you my bit of advice that you can improve and score lower on the course without doing anything technically. And this one is really simple. Firstly, I've got something that can measure distance to the green and to different things. That really helps. It might be a little bit of an investment, but it saves so many shots off your score. And the second one, know your yardages. Get on a launch monitor if you can, or top trace, or loads of ranges that you can get on to know your distances and how far you hit clubs. But for, in this example, the watch says 120 to the, mid, to the front, 135 to the middle, and then 150 to the back. I see so many people going straight to the front of the green yardage, picking the club that they hit to the front of the green maybe one time out of 10, and then they never get there. There's loads of trouble short, it's uphill. Pick the right club, pick enough club. I'm gonna go straight for the back of the green yardage to make sure I get over all the rubbish. So pitching wedge, no. Let's go nine iron, that's my 150 club. 150 to the back, and let's just make sure I get it there. Nothing technical, just club choice and playing smart like Simon said earlier. And there we go, up on the middle of the green. Guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the guest. Let us know in the comments if there's anyone you wanna see on Out of Bounds Learn and make sure you like, comment, subscribe so we can do more of these videos in amazing locations like Costa Navarino. Thanks for watching.